a very good morning students uh, today we are going to study our english literature chapter it is a uh, chapter number 8 grandpa's tree by ruth harrigan now uh, this story is uh, going to be very interesting for you all since uh, it's about uh, this boy and his mother and uh, the kind of rapport that uh, they are sharing uh, and uh, since during these uh, times of covid we are spending a lot of time with our parents uh, we are going to relate a lot with it okay children so i want you all to open page number 109 uh, there is a starter activity uh, i will be explaining you the activity rest you will be doing it on your own in your textbook itself okay so uh, children uh, it's written the starter activity think of an item you own with fond memories attached to it how did how did you first get it what makes you cherish the object how would you feel if you could no longer have it okay so over your children uh, they are telling you that there could be something something valuable to you something you really like which uh, you know you are really close to and this thing has been given to you by someone it can be a toy it can be a book it can be uh, you know a watch it can be an accessory anything children a diary which has been gifted to you by someone you really like uh, maybe your grandparents maybe your parents maybe your cousins your aunt your uncle so you need to think that which is the best thing out of all those gifts that you received and you have to choose one and write about that thing on page number 109 okay so you will be mentioning first of all what is that thing okay next you will tell how did you get it as if who gifted it to you or you found it somewhere maybe so a description of the object what is this object how do you what do you what do you feel about this object and last what mem what memory do you have attached with it why is it so special to you why, why is it so close to you what memory do you have attached to it okay so this page you will be uh, you know maybe sitting alone and introspecting thinking remembering well, you know uh, down the lines uh, uh, what happened which is the most special thing how did you receive it and you're going to fill this activity okay children based on this starter activity we have a lesson in which there is a special thing which is very dear to this boy in this chapter okay children grandpa's tree a boy falls from a tree and hurts himself badly do you think he should blame the tree and allow it to be cut down read to find out what happens so over here we have been asked a question children that suppose a boy falls from the tree do you think it's the mistake of the tree should the tree be cut down because the boy got injured we should read and find out the story okay children grandpa's tree eric stared up at the oak tree in his front yard his parents told him that his grandfather had planted it 30 years ago eric always imagined what that looked like Thin grandpa leaning over a hole in the ground a bucket by his side with the sapling in it gently parting the earth for what would one day be the massive tree okay so over your children you could see the picture of a nice huge oak tree okay and next to the oak tree there was this boy eric okay he was on his wheelchair so you can make it out that i suppose eric has got hurt with this oak tree he must have fallen down from it but still when he's looking at it do you think he's getting negative feelings or he's getting positive feelings do you think he's thinking bad or he's thinking good what we can see he's thinking something good he's remembering his grandfather and what is he remembering about him he's remembering that grandfather who was very lean lean means thin very thin man 
must have parted the earth, must have dug the earth and put the sapling. Sapling is a very small young plant children. Okay, and once that plant was planted, today it is a massive oak tree. So he was remembering this tree as a small sapling. He was remembering his grandfather who took the pain, efforts and initiative to do such a good work. And so that means children, he really loved his grandfather and he really loved the oak tree. Okay, though he was hurt, but there was no mistake of the tree according to Eric. Okay, so he was just looking at the tree, looking at it, staring it. Knowing grandpa, he would have finished the job neatly. Then brought over his lawn chair and sat and admired his work for a few hours. Smiling and watching the tree grow. Last night when his mother said they were going to cut down the tree, Eric tried to tell his parents that the tree was planted as a sign of grandpa's love. His mother began to cry. She pointed at Eric's wheelchair and said, That tree is coming down tomorrow and ran from the room. So children, over here we see, first of all, in the first place, when Eric was looking at the tree, what was he remembering? He was remembering his grandfather. Does that happen to you children? When you look at something related to your loved ones, maybe uh, it can be your father's chair, it can be uh, your, uh, some, some book of your mother, it can be some toy of your siblings, your brother or sister, it can be anything. When you look at that thing, you remember them. It can be a photo frame which you look and you remember your grandparents. So similarly, that tree was a fond memory of Eric's grandfather, right? And he was very close to that tree. So he felt that, you know, the grandfather must have, he started memorizing all those times when his grandfather must have planted the small sapling, must have sat under the uh, tree, look, uh, you know, seeing it grow. And so it was basically not only a tree children, it was like a child who has grown, grown in that lawn, you know. So suddenly to cut, to cut it down is like taking a part of your memory. So he was not very happy, right? Then we see a second picture, children where if you see uh, Eric's mother is there who's really disappointed. Why? Because for her the most important person is Eric and Eric has got hurt. So she's unable to understand that you know she's feeling that if the tree is not there maybe Eric will be safe. Many a times that happens with us children. Our parents get very scared when we are, especially in times of COVID, something coming from outside. Immediately your mother and father will want you to sanitize it. Wash your hands 10 times a day. Be careful, wear your mask, wear your gloves when you're going outside. Why all of this? Because they love you. So over here, Eric's mother's love is overshadowing uh, the entire, you know, effort of grandfather. That you know, she does, she's not, she's unable to understand anything else. Only thing she wants is Eric's safety. So she wants the tree to be removed because she feels if Eric has fallen once, he might fall again. So there was a conversation between Eric and his mother where Eric is trying to convince that mother, please, please don't cut down the tree. It, it is a fond memory of grandfather. So do you think she agreed? The only thing she had was tears in her eyes and she's saying the tree is coming down tomorrow because she was looking at her child in the wheelchair. He's hurt his limbs. He cannot walk. He's on the wheelchair. Eric's dad just cleared his throat and shrugged. Dad, Eric said, it's not the tree's fault or grandpa's that I fell out of it. Cutting the tree down will make me feel worse. Your mother just doesn't want to have a look at it. Try to understand that, his father said. Eric shook his head and wheeled out of the dining room. So if you see children, over here, after trying to talk to his mother, he tried to explain to his father, 
But what was the response of the father? Eric's father said that, uh, you know, it is not that uh, we are thinking about the tree. It is not that we are thinking about, uh, uh, you know, about you only right now, your injury right now. He said the mother can no longer feel happy till the time the tree is there. It is the decision of the mother and as a family we need to take one single decision. Can anybody think of a situation where everybody wants to decide something else? There will be a chaos, right? So over here, he shrugged and shrugged and means agreed, moved his head, moved his shoulders, agreed that you need to be agreeing to your mother's decision. You can't argue to her. So Eric is trying to explain, but the father is agreeing to the decision of the mother. And at last Eric shook his head and wheeled out of the dining room and he was still very sad. He didn't understand what good it would do to cut down the tree now. Cutting down the tree wouldn't change that he fell from the tree. But it would be one less sign of having grandpa around. And Eric didn't want that. Suddenly he knew what he had to do. He rolled over to the bottom of the tree in his wheelchair and looked up to find the place he usually started his climb. It was still there. A peg in the tree he hammered in a year ago, when he started climbing the tree when he missed Grandpa. But now instead of it being in a place where he could jump up, it was out of his reach. Eric realized he need a new peg. So children, over here you can see that Eric is continuously trying to evaluate. Evaluate meaning he's trying to think of a plan, think of a solution to this current problem. He's saying, is the tree to be blamed for his falling down? He's asking his mother, he's asking his father, he's asking himself, is it the tree to be blamed that he's sitting on a wheelchair? Is it the tree that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that probably, you know, he, will he become fine if the tree is cut down? Nothing can be blamed upon the tree. And is it sure that tomorrow he might not get hurt somewhere else? It's just the tree to be blamed. He wanted to explain to his parents that a tree is not to be blamed. It was his mistake. So he started thinking, let me evaluate my climb. Let me think, how did I fall? So he went next to the tree children. And he started remembering the times he used to climb, keeping his feet on the peg. Now children, peg is a wooden piece which is hammered, which is hit into the tree to make it easier for us to climb. So these are the pegs which have been put by Eric to climb the tree. And he used to feel very happy. Suddenly he felt that it is almost the height of his head when he's sitting down. That's quite a height to put his leg up and climb. So he realized maybe all these years the tree has been growing. So that might be the reason that he fell down last time because the tree, the peg height has increased. He needs something. He needs a new peg. He needs a new peg to place it over here so that he is safe. So he found the solution and now he wanted to convince his parents because this is one sign of his grandfather. If this goes, then there will be one sign lesser of his grandfather. His grandfather is no longer with him and it is a very fond memory. He loves climbing whenever he misses his grandfather. Eric realized he'd need a new peg. A half hour later, he had hammered in a few more pegs at lower heights. As he did this, he planned his route up the tree. Realizing that he could climb most of the way up using his arms. The chin-ups he had been doing to strengthen his arms would come in handy today. He checked his watch. The tree cutters were coming in a half hour. He had to hurry. Tossing the hammer to the ground, Eric reached for the first peg. He felt his body lift out of the wheelchair as he pulled himself up the tree. Then, and then miraculously, he was climbing again. When he reached the pegs he used to use, his body went into automatic, one hand reaching over the other, until he pulled himself up most of the way. He stopped and steadied himself. Then he leaned back against the trunk and lifted his first left foot and then his right over to the correct position. It's this big oak tree over here. 
So children, over here you see that uh, uh, Eric you took a lot of concentration over his present situation. He went back to the tree. Over there children, he saw carefully and he realized he needed a new peg because the previous pegs as the height of the tree was increasing got completely above uh, you know a level which was not possible and could basically give an injury. So he put in new pegs. He took a hammer and he realized if he placed new pegs maybe he can still climb the tree. And why he thought so children? Because Eric used to do a lot of uh, exercises and chin up. So now in chin-ups children, you're basically using your arms to lift up your body. So when you're doing like this, then your arms get really strong. Your arms have got the strength to lift you up. So he had been climbing trees since so many years. So his arms were really strong. So he had to prove his mother that he's not wrong. And maybe the tree can be a sign of his health recovering, of his limbs strengthening. Right children? So to prove to his mother, he decided he placed new pegs over here and he started his climb. He looked at his watch and he realized half an hour still is left. Maybe I can just climb up there and maybe I can convince my mother. So he, you know, kind of hammered the pegs uh, in time and one by one he went on to the pegs and uh, his body got into a mode of automatic. By the time he reached the previous old pegs, his body was used to the climb. His body knew how to get lifted and uh, knew the swaying action, the, so the, the, the right amount of grip required to hold on to them. So his body without any efforts got lifted up till he reached the trunk where he can place, lean himself on the trunk, lift, it, lift his feet up and realize that it is this big oak tree over here. It is this big oak tree responsible for his climb, not his fall. So it was his mistake that he didn't realize that one peg is now required that last time he injured himself. But it was this oak tree that made him get onto it and become independent. Getting onto the wheelchair children, he was totally dependent on others. What pleasure will it give to the sight of his mother if she realizes that he's climbed on his own? Right children? He heard his mother saying about 15 minutes later. Eric saw her walk beneath him, followed by two men wearing orange t-shirts. One of them looked over at the wheelchair, then peered up into the tree and saw Eric. Eric waved at him. Ma'am, what do you want us to do about him? He asked, pointing up at Eric. Eric's mother looked up, then stepped back. Eric, how did you get up there? Help him down. The tree cutter scratched his head and grinned. Ma'am, but he's a pretty good climber. I don't know if I can get him down from there. You must have some equipment or something. Just get him down. He'll fall. Eric, what's the matter with you? Nothing, Mom, Eric said. In fact, I'm feeling so good. I don't know what you are up to, Eric, but that tree is coming down today. His mother turned to the two men. Go get your equipments and he'll be down by the time you get back. So children, you see over here that, uh, you know, Eric has taken a step. It's not an easy step. He knew that uh, it's been really long. He's hurt himself if he can do something like that. But he did not do something out of uh, a hurry, children. He went, he thought about the situation and then he realized he will be absolutely safe because only a few pegs were required. And ultimately he climbed the tree. And then his mother, after 15 minutes, came in over there along with the two tree cutters. And uh, the tree cutters were surprised. There is a boy sitting on top of that tree. How can we cut it down? So he questioned the mother. So the mother was quite surprised and when she looked at Eric, she had, she stepped back. When do you step back children? When you're shocked, when you're really scared 
and she asked that how did you get there? She was very surprised. She can't believe that a boy who's injured can climb that tree. That was out of question. She didn't think that. She thought that maybe whatever is the reason first I want him down. So she started pleading the two men, get him down. And what was their response children? The tree cutter said, if the boy can climb there, that means he's a very, very good, excellent climber and he doesn't need our assistance. They just didn't realize that the boy was, you know, dependent on a wheelchair. He had hurt his legs. He can no longer walk. They could not realize that because it was such an excellent climb. But then the mother didn't want to hear any single thing. She was absolutely very angry children. All that she wanted, she wanted Eric down. So she was telling the two men, go, I'm giving you a word that you come back in this much time, in 15 minutes or so, and I'll make sure that Eric comes down because ultimately that tree is coming down. See, she was not at all convinced with Eric's explanation. The two men walked off towards their truck. Eric could see them shaking their heads. He looked down at his mother, who continued to remain planted in one spot, staring up at him. Mom, I'm not coming down. You most certainly are. You got yourself up there, so get down now. No, I want you to listen to me, Mom, please. And then Eric added, don't you see that this tree is a gift from Grandpa? It reminds me of him every day. That's why I love to climb it and I want to still climb it. Please, Mom, don't take that away from me. His mother shook her head. But Eric, if only he didn't plant it, you wouldn't have fallen. You would need, need this wheelchair, she said. Mom, Eric said, cutting down the tree is not the right thing to do. It's like saying, I can't do what I used to love to do and I can, Mom, more than you think. He saw the two men coming back to the tree, carrying saws. His mother shook her head and then she said quietly, I don't know how you did it, Eric. How you did you get up there? He pointed out down to the base of the tree. I just lowered the pegs, Mom. That's all. It's safe, honest. And my arms are really strong and I think it's a good exercise so I can push the chair better. Mother reached over and touched the lowest peg on the tree, then nodded and turned to the men. All right, she said, just send us a bill for your time. The tree isn't coming down. She waited for a few moments, then placed her left foot on the lowest peg. Then hesitating, she put her right foot on the next peg. She put her right foot on the next peg. Okay, so children, over here you can see the initiative, the initiative taken by Eric. What he did, he was absolutely polite. Usually what happens children when you're having a conversation with your parents, uh, we end up being a little a little, uh, we, you know, uh, argumentative tone. We let, end up being a little rude, a little harsh with our parents. Did Eric do that? No, he didn't do that. What he did, he thought of various ways he can convince, this, convince his mother. What was his first way? He, he went down, he went to the room, he told his mother, Grandpa is really dear to me, it reminds me of Grandpa. What was the mother's response? She didn't listen to him, she walked out from there. Second initiative, he try, tried explaining his father. Did that work? No. Then third initiative, he went himself to the tree to find a solution. He went, it was a really after a long time that Eric took this climb. But all these years of his exercising and chin up, he could make up to the tree. So finally, he climbed the tree and he said, Mother, I'm not coming down till the time you don't listen to me. It's not that he's arguing with his mother. He wanted to talk to his mother. So ultimately, the mother said, okay, how did you climb up there? In the, in, in the initial stage, she was not ready to listen she told the men go and fetch the tools and they actually went to the truck to get all the equipments and they were really you know they also felt bad that the boy has climbed all the way up there is a little disagreement happening between the mother and the son but then they just nodded their head and went away right and over here the mother was like the tree is coming down you can't argue with me so he said that it reminds me of grandpa 
it is not the blame it is not the uh, you know the fault of the tree it reminds me it taught me to climb the, this tree taught eric to climb and that's why his arms are so strong that's why he can roll his wheelchair around the house it's like an exercise so she said it won't be safe so he made sure he told his mother these new things are making him safe so what did she do she heard him that's what your parents will do if you are patient with them if you listen to them if you try convincing them in a polite manner the mother came up to the tree to check the pegs and she wanted to make sure so she started her climb she started her climb to go to eric because after all she is eric's mother she loves him she wants him to be happy but she wants him to be safe as well so she put her right foot then the left foot and she was making sure that each peg is absolutely safe for eric and not making you know any more uh, uh, any more uh, you know any more mis uh, uh, loops left for a mistake so she made sure that eric was absolutely safe by checking it she put her right foot on the next peg slowly she climbed up looking at eric as she did until she got to the branch then she sat on the branch smiling at him see mom it's not so scary is it eric asked truthfully i'm terrified she said laughing she looked down at the house yard and yard and green but i should have come up here a while ago it is a great view isn't it it's a fantastic view eric said grandpa would have loved what you did today mother said eric nodded then he reached for his mother's hand and there they sat in the tree together so children what a beautiful moment they must have had so do you think that moment could have been achieved if eric argued with his mother if supposed children the option eric would have selected to save his precious tree would be to fight with his mother do you think he would share this moment with his mother no children so what is the solution solution is if you are polite if you are uh, communicative if you're talking and you're polite and you're loving then ultimately there will be a place where everyone will be happy so he kept though he was a little disappointed but he kept working on it he kept finding a solution and finally the mother understood that in this place eric was right and she was blinded by the love of eric by the love for eric she really loved eric so she did not see that this tree was actually a sign of grandfather this tree was actually a sign of his love and she even mentioned that i should have come here long time back i should because the view is excellent because uh, the climb is awesome and though she was really terrified she was scared but she felt as if she achieved something what all she achieved she overcome her fear and she also achieved uh, the trust of eric right children so this is a very beautiful story a moral uh, uh, from the story we can get children that during these times of covid we can definitely have very sweet yet Uh, you know we can definitely have a different point of view children but still a sweet conversation and apply it in our families right children i want you all to be really really good kids at home and listen to your parents and then make sure they listen to you but in a very polite way okay children i hope you all enjoyed the story uh, there are a few exercises which we will be doing again in our english literature note books please keep your work up to date if you don't understand anything you can get back to me thank you so much children have a nice day